Hi everybody and welcome to the Craft Stash VIP membership blog hop. Now this is really exciting because today or actually yesterday um, Craft Stash launched their VIP membership. If you are uh, now a member, congratulations. I look forward to sharing with you some exclusive content very soon. Uh, there's actually some in the members area already for you. If you're not a member, um, if you were on the waiting list, you'll have had all the details through to your inbox. Um, but if you weren't on the waiting list, if you missed those announcements, please do come along to Craft Stash or see the details below to find out more about being a Craft Stash VIP member because you are going to access amazing tutorials like these on the blog hop. So you've already seen some fantastic videos if you popped through. Um, if you're just joining here, do look in the description below because you'll be able to find out all the details of where to go next and where you may have missed already. But essentially, start on the Craft Stash YouTube channel and you can hop on from there. So I'm going to be showing you today a quick technique tutorial. Um, we're going to be making this card. Now this is the finished piece, but I'm going to show you how I got this lovely watercolour effect without the need for any drawing. I'm actually using a die as a template, um, using a little bit of embossing. Now, I don't know if you know, but all your dies you can emboss as well and you can get some fabulous results. So as I say, I'm using this one here. Now this is actually a bit of a sneak peek. This launched, um, this only launched yesterday or day before on TV. It's actually launching on Craft Stash on Friday. So that's tomorrow if you're watching this on uh, February the 2nd. So this is Magnolia Drive. This is one of the items from the Textures Magnolia Drive collection. I'm really excited to be able to launch this. I absolutely adore it. This is a huge die. It's one of the main dies in the collection. There's lots more to be seen within the range. So go and check those out uh, or join me on Friday on live on Craft Stash for the launch there. You'll be able to see everything. But this is what I'm going to be using. As you can see, it has created this. Now, uh, rather than if I just lay this, in fact, it's not going to lay over because it's the opposite way, but you can see how that's transferred. Now, I've not used the whole image. I've actually come off the paper and uh, I'll show you exactly how I did this. So let's just pop that to the side. Now I'm going to use watercolour paper because I want to get that watercolour effect. I'm using my Distress Oxides for colouring in the image and I'm using a rubber mat in my die cutting machine to create the kind of the template for me. So if I just bring my plate out of my die cutting machine and within my plate, usually with most plate sandwiches, with most machines, you'll have uh, a thinner plate and this is almost like a shim. Uh, I'm taking this one out and that's usually what you might do if you're using an embossing folder, so the same sort of sandwich. And I'm going to place down in its place there, between my two cutting mats, a rubber mat. Now these do come in different thicknesses, so you may need to adjust your sandwich to suit your machine. I'm using quite a thick one. This is called a tan mat, so it's a rubber squishy mat. And then I'm going to put my watercolour paper, already cut to size, ideally, but you don't have to do that right now. Um, and then I'm going to place on here my die. Now the die is going to have that cutting edge facing down into the paper, like so. A little bit of tape on the die there, just hold everything still. Make sure that's all within the parameters of the cutting plate, so nothing sticking out too much. And then your cutting plate sandwich on the top. And I'm just going to run this through my machine. I'm running it through exactly the same way as I would if I was die cutting now. Um, only I'll go forward, I'll come backwards again, just as I would. But you'll notice that the pressure is a little bit lighter than if you were die cutting usually. So uh, don't worry, that's still having the right effect. So let's just bring in the paper and the die and hopefully you can see on there we've got this really lovely emboss on there now. So I'm going to lay that down. I'm actually keeping the die in place. It's taped to the paper. I'm keeping it there just so that I can um, use it again. If I need to re-emboss re it, it's in place. I don't need to worry about anything. So now onto the colouring. I'm going to bring in a, uh, a, this is actually a heat resistant mat, but it's got a shiny surface, so it's water resistant as well. Um, the colour I want my florals to be is a nice blue, so I'm using Uncharted Mariner, which is one of the more recent Distress Ink and Oxide colours. I'm just squidging a little bit direct from my ink pad onto the mat. I've got some plain water, and I'm just going to spritz, really just spritz half of this, because I want some of it to remain neat and some of it to be diluted down. And I've got a paintbrush. Now the first thing I'm going to do is pick up from the really watery side with a tiny little bit of colour in it. And I'm just going to follow one of the petals in here. Now the beauty of this is that you follow the grooves, you follow the emboss of each of the petals as your guide, but if you go over it, it really does not matter because this is a nice, loose, watercolour floral effect. 
Then I'm going to dip the end of my paintbrush into the, uh, the stronger colour at the top there that hasn't been diluted down. I'm just going to tap that into the petal there. You can see that starting to wick out. So I'm going to take the colour off and repeat that. And I'm basically going to work around the entire flower here and then all of the leaves as well in a green, doing the same technique. So just filling each shape that you've embossed with a pale colour and then adding a deep colour just to one end where you might have the um, like the darker areas, which would usually be for me, I always think, the centre of the flower. So you can watch as I just do a few of those. So as you can see already I'm starting to develop a, a floral image there, uh, very much a loose watercolour floral image. I'm just going to take a piece of kitchen towel. Once you've done all of your blue flowers, you want to pick up the paper, or oh, sorry, pick up the ink with some spare paper, some kitchen towel is absolutely fine, and then you can move on and do exactly the same with the green. Once I've finished all the green leaves and even added uh, a yellow centre as well, the last thing I do, uh, I'll just skip to this part for you, is to dilute some green. If you do your leaves last, you'll already have this on your mat. And I just like to do a few splats like this. So just picking up some green ink and splat that over. And that really gives it a true watercolour effect. Even if it touches, let's take that away from the dye now. Even if it touches into your wet ink on your florals, it gives it a lovely uh, colour. And you can see there when it's dry, it all fades nicely into each other. So there we go. You can see that emboss on there. Using that emboss, uh, once it's all coloured in, you barely see the emboss. So it just looks like you've done a fantastic watercolour painting and you're very much an artist now. So I hope you enjoy that technique. You can use that for many different dyes that are on the market, but the uh, Textures Magnolia Drive one is absolutely perfect for this technique. Uh, use different colours as well. I'd love to see what you make. Let me know in the comments if you've tried this or done it before, done it maybe even in a slightly different way. I'd love to hear. Um, and please do hop along to the next person in this blog hop and again if you haven't seen the details for the craft slash vip membership please do check these out below it's well worth joining i can't wait to see you in the vip members area